Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well. We're ready to begin, embrace the uh, the holiday of Shmini Aseret Simchat Torah, make that transition from Sukkot. There's actually a prayer that is supposed to be recited at the last time that one sits in the sukkah for the season. It's actually printed in our in, in our Sidurim, in our prayer books, that the very last time one sits in the sukkah, one says the words, May it be uh, your will, God, and the God of our forefathers, that just as I have fulfilled this mitzvah and dwelled in this sukkah, so may I merit in the coming year to dwell in the sukkah, the skin of the Leviathan next year in Jerusalem. It's a really interesting prayer. And uh, and it's also unique that we say a prayer the last time we fulfill the mitzvah of sukkah. After all, we don't really have that in any other ritual, at least that's coming to the top of my mind. We don't, uh, you know, on Passover, we don't, uh, we do the last time we eat matzah, we don't say a special prayer for that. You, you just eat the matzah. On, uh, on Hanukkah, the last Hanukkah candles, there's no special prayer that's uh, printed in our, in our prayer books that we say the very last time we do that, uh, that mitzvah. But for Sukkot, there is. And, and one, one reason, one uh, interpretation, which I really loved, uh, was that very simply the Sukkah represents, in many ways, God's protection. In many ways, uh, it represents faith. Our, we're being exposed to the elements. We're, we're vulnerable, and we have faith in God. And where else? was that experience. That was the Garden of Eden. Our sukkah experience in very many ways reenacts that experience of just being out there in the open and relying only on God to, uh, to protect us. And the Garden of Eden, if you remember the story, we're going to start reading it next week in, in Bereshit, the Garden of Eden story didn't end so well. <laughs> they got kicked out of the garden and, and punished in, in many ways after having violated their own uh, the responsibilities they took upon themselves not to eat of the fruit and so here we are reenacting this garden of eden experience sitting in our sukkah and what do we do we're not kicked out but we leave on our own terms and i think that's a very you know beautiful thought in particular this this time of year and this in this season and this experience that in many many ways we have to make sure that if we're not doing something we're doing it on our own terms and for our own values and that's the experience of the sukkah. We say, God, we're now going to leave the sukkah, but we're not getting kicked out. We're going to leave, and we pray that next year we're going to uh, to dwell in a sukkah in Yerushalayim in, in, in a time of, of redemption. On Sunday, we're going to celebrate Simchat Torah, a beautiful day of, of dancing and singing and Torah reading, and that's one of the ways in which our community has grown over the last many years is, is the aliyot, is the Torah reading, both for, for women and, and for men. And we're going to come back to that next year. We're not going to lose our momentum, and we're not going to lose our momentum as well with the dancing, with the hakafot. The ritual of Simchat Torah is the hakafa, is dancing around in a circle. That's how Jews dance. We dance, we dance in a circle, and there's great meaning to that because in the circle, everyone has, has equal access. I recall reading this great story that, uh, that, that uh, Gary Rosenblatt wrote about... Uh, about a Simchat Torah that took place in, in 1960, in October 1960 in Pittsburgh. And uh, for baseball fans, if you say October 1960, it'll mean something because that was when the, 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 the Pittsburgh Pirates won the World Series. They, uh, they beat, unfortunately, they beat the Yankees and, uh, and they won the World Series. And not only they beat the Yankees, but they, they beat them. It was, it was the, the, the ninth inning. It was, the score was tied 9-9, nine to nine, and Bill Mazurowski so famously hit, hit the ball off of, off of Ralph Terry on a 1-0 count, and the Pittsburgh Pirates won, won the World Series. And of course, what happens when your team wins the World Series? They, they ran out into the streets dancing and singing, and it happened to be Simchat Torah at the same time, and there was a congregation nearby of European Jews, of Holocaust survivors, and they were singing and dancing because it's Simchas Torah, because it's the Torah, and here comes this group, and they're singing and dancing because the pirates just won, and they see each other, and they embrace each other, and they walk, run around in circles and circles and circles, dancing, 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 celebrating, but of course everybody's celebrating their own thing, and all it was after a while that they realized, hey, wait a second, those black hats that those people are wearing, those those aren't Pittsburgh Pirates hats. Those are those are the hats that the Jews wear, and and of course the the Jews realize oh they're not singing because because we're celebrating the completion of the cycle of the Torah. They're singing because of their own reasons because their sports team was was victorious. And and I think it's a it's a beautiful image uh, for me understanding this, trying to understand this image of what it means where everyone has their own point of celebration. The idea of a circle 
is that it can be shared. And no matter how many people one adds to the circle, it never really loses its shape. It expands and expands and everyone has equal access to the center. And that's the ideal, that's the objective, that even in a year when we're not going to be dancing in a circle, even in a year when we're not going to be celebrating the Torah, even in a year when we're not completing the cycle of the reading of the Torah. Remember, we took months off from, from synagogue. Well, many studied the Torah portion, the ritual of reading the Torah and completing the Torah in one given year. We haven't completed the reading of the Torah in, in, in this year, but all the more so we make a commitment that when we come back, we'll come back stronger, stronger than ever, and we'll have more, more and more room in our circle of dancing for anyone who wants to come and celebrate the Torah with us. Be well, everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach from the Zellermeyer family Sukkah. This is a very special place in the history of my family. It's celebrating its 45th anniversary this year. My parents acquired it two months before I was born. They built it in snowstorms. They built it in hurricanes. It lived for eight years in Providence, Rhode Island, for 19 years in West Hartford, Connecticut, for three years in Curacao in the Caribbean. Then it moved around various points in the United States, including five years with my brother and his family in Boston before coming here to Montreal 11 years ago. Many visitors have been in the Sukkah, from the virtual visitors, the Ushbizin that we welcome each night of Sukkot, to a, an errant raccoon that visited my great my grandfather, Max's great grandfather, Dr. Max Zellermeyer of blessed memory. And uh, unfortunately this year, we don't have very many visitors, just the virtual ones. So I'm happy to bring you all inside for a taste of this weekend's Chagim. We begin with Shmini Atzeret. Tomorrow in Shul, on Shabbat, we say Tfilat Geshem, the prayer for rain. It's counterpart, the prayer for dew, Tfilat Tal, we say at the vernal equinox on the first day of Pesach. But in the fall, we pray for rain, that the land might be receptive to new plantings that will blossom come springtime. This setting is a beautiful composition by Mayor Finkelstein. We are really one of the few synagogues in the world that perform it. It has a beautiful lilting melody for the refrain of each verse. Bavuro, bavuro, al tim na ma'im, betzid ko, betzid ko, chon chashrat ma'im. And it ends with the declaration of Mashiv Haruach Umorid Hageshem. Yes, that extra few words that we add in the middle of the Amidah during the Avot section begins on Shmini Atzeret. And so this is a beautiful way to bring in the fall weather, but we look forward to the springtime.
The next selection comes from the services both on the evening and the morning of Simchat Torah. It's the Aliyah when all the young people, Kol Hane Arim, all those below Bar and Bat Mitzvah age, are called up to the Torah. We huddle them underneath a big talit, and they get to say the brachot that they hear their parents say when they are called to the Torah. It was a special moment when I was young, and I know it's a special moment for my kids and yours. The tradition is that at the conclusion of this Aliyah, we offer the children a blessing. Hamalach hagoelo timi kol ra. May the angel that saved me from all sorts of evil protect the young people as well. This is a beautiful Hasidic composition and it's arranged and sung in only the way that our Shar Choir can. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
The final selection from Simchat Torah is indeed the final selection of the holiday season that began with Slichot, took us through Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and then Sukkot, and now brought us to this day where we celebrate, where we let our hair down a little bit. Many traditions at the Shar have evolved around this holiday, including my using operatic tunes, Broadway tunes, pop tunes, and the repetition of the Amidah. But the long-standing tradition is that the choir and I offer a more light-hearted setting of Adon Olam to conclude the holiday services. We've done all sorts of fun things over the years. Star Wars themes, Frozen, Abba, Queen last year. This year, we decided to go to the hopeful side of the spectrum, taking that famous melody by Rodgers and Hammerstein, You'll Never Walk Alone. We hope that it brings you a sense of optimism and a source of strength as we continue to persevere through these challenging times. Even though we can't be together in person, we continue to be together virtually. And if we stick together, pray together, hope together, we all will find ourselves with a partner. We will not be walking alone. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach. Yeah.